is my belief that socialism and peace are inseparable. And I reiterate that the Socialist Party will stand firmly behind its resolution to oppose American involvement in this war. Mr. Chairman, Louis Fraine, a local Boston. The chair recognizes the delegate from Boston. And I still want to know what specific action we are going to take against the war. Your resolution is all very nice, but will it stop even one boy from being killed? Yeah. I don't no, think so. The party stigmatizes unpatriotic. The task that confronts us is difficult. Let us hope that we can handle it properly. What's that supposed to be? Stupid. I'd like to know if the Socialist Party is going to fight conscription or not. That's what I'd like to know. Will the delegate identify himself I am not a delegate, Mr. Press, Chairman. Please. My name is John Reed. I write for the magazine The Masses, and I want to know if the Socialist Party is going to organize demonstrations I'm against sorry, the I'm sorry, Mr. Reed. You have no credentials here. Now, this floor is reserved for delegates. Mr. Not Chairman, Mr. is the Socialist Party prepared to take hey, a position on the sir, draft or I'm not? I'm sorry, Mr. Reed. You have no credentials. Reed, Chairman, you're getting into party politics, eh? The chair is trying to be a journalist. Mr. Chairman, so is Trotsky. Let us see what happens in Russia. Why don't you join the Socialist Party? We need good people like you. Big things are happening in Russia. As appalling as it may seem to see socialists supporting bloodshed, I can understand the necessity of supporting one's government during times of war. The task that confronts us is a giant. In that, we must continue our opposition. Comrades, we have made a great stride forward in our program to capture the Socialist Party for revolution. The time of right-wing domination of the party is ended. They have fallen before the shining example of a revolution in Russia like so many bowling pins. <laughs> Comrades, we have done better than we could have dreamed. The left wing has won 12 of the 15 seats on the Socialist Party executive, including myself, Edmund McAlpine, and Jack <laughs> seen you in a long time. That's <laughs> right. Is this thing going to last all day? At night, we've been kicked out. Kicked out of what? The Socialist Party. Wait, wait, who got kicked out? Everybody in that room. The executive committee kicked us all out. The whole left wing? That's right. They nullified the election. Can they do that? They've done it. We're the majority. We have the votes. We weren't expelled by the membership. We were expelled by the executive. And you're talking about doing exactly what the executive committee wants us to do. Give the party back to him without a fight. Yes! She's going to organize our own party! God damn it, Louis, the Socialist Party is our own party. We're voting into power by its membership, and we can't be expelled by the executive. It's an illegal act, and if we fight it at the convention, we'll win. Why do we have to fight? What do you mean, why do we have to fight? For what do we stay in a party in which we must win control from the minority? Not once, but twice! Well, what is it, Louis? You mean if we have to fight for what we deserve and to hell with it? Is that your idea of revolution? No. I'd like to my hear idea, more about your revolutionary My idea of revolution, concept, my idea of revolution is not a revolution in my own party. Oh, no. And my idea of a socialist party is not a debate in society. It is a party of action. Fine. Executive, so is he, so is he. No one's right. admitted without a red card. Well, where do we get the red card? You'll we'll have to take that up with the credentials committee. And where's the credentials committee? I don't know. Uh, I don't think he wants us to go in there. Uh, well, the way to take the hall is to take the hall. Edmund! Edmund! Jack! Okay, let's go, let's go. Come on, this way! To propose the agenda, I would like to read a message from the Credentials Committee to the floor. May we, may we please have order back there in the back of the hall? Could we have Sergeant at Arms? Would you see what's going on back there? Ladies and gentlemen, it seems we have a group of intruders who are trying to take over this conference. We're not going to let them. Now please, please sit down.
up. I need these aisles clear. Sergeant at arms, I must have these aisles clear. Please, everyone, sit down. Now, these are Bolshevik sympathizers who are trying to take over this party, and we're not going to let them. The police are coming. These people aren't socialists. These people are just thugs. Now, you see, that is Bolshevik tactics. Well, Elliot, these people are imposters. They were not elected to the leadership. Comrade Chairman, I move that we immediately constitute ourselves as a bona fide Communist Party and that we call ourselves the Communist Labor Party of America. Well, look, if, if we're going to have a really revolutionary party, I think what we have to do is to find out from the American worker what he wants the most, and then we have to translate it back to him in terms of the labor movement as a whole. What we have to do is make him want more. We have to make him want the whole goddamn revolution. Those people upstairs think that Karl Marx was somebody who wrote a good antitrust law. And whether we call our party the Socialist Labor Party or the real Socialist Communist or whatever we call the party, it doesn't matter because it... Hello, Louis, you lost? No, I'm not lost. I'm here to tell my friends that the newly formed Communist Party of America is meeting at the Russian Federation on Blue Island Avenue. We welcome your applications. They will be judged on an individual basis. You're going to judge our applications? We're going to apply to you for membership? Comrade Chairman, I'd like to call our question, please. The motion has been made and seconded that we immediately constitute ourselves as a bona fide Communist Party, and that we call ourselves the Communist Labor Party of America. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Yay. Yay. to be fighting against one another. We should be united in our struggle against the capital. You should have thought of that six weeks ago, Louis. If your people had stayed with us, we'd have had a majority and would be in control of that convention upstairs. We have five times your membership. Louis, your arithmetic something like your politics. Comrade Chairman, we, we will be at the Russian Federation on the Blue Island Avenue. I hope to see some of you there. Comrade Chairman, I move we immediately send a delegate to Moscow to gain recognition by the common turn for the Communist Labor Party of America and that delegate be Jack Reed. Second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded to send Jack Reed to Moscow immediately as the international delegate to obtain recognition of the common turn for the Communist Labor Party of America. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Since the first question I'm going to be asked by the common turn... All right, thank you. All right, comrade, since the first question I'm going to be asked by the common turn is going to be about membership eligibility, I think I'm going to have to be very clear what our position is in relation to the Foreign Language Federation. I'm going to have to say exactly what our requirements are as opposed to any other group, and I think we'll have to make it clear on our platform committee and be very clear in the manifesto. Welcome to Moscow, Jack. Okay, all right. Well, I guess you, you boys think you can run a newspaper without...